So if Bitcoin is a tool that's meant to be used all around the world, it must be taught by people all around the world. It must be developed by people all around the world. Um, our next panel is about B-Trust. Um, and these, panel, these panelists are educating users and funding Bitcoin development all around the world. Um, and you know, Jack Dorsey and Jay-Z started this initiative in 2021. Um, and they've assigned a group of board members. And we have some of those folks here with us today. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome um, Abu Bakar New Khalil, the CEO and CTO of Recursive Capital. Ojoma Ochai, Managing Director and Co-Creator of the CC Hub. <laughs> no other than Jack Dorsey, the Co-Founder and CEO of Block. <laughs> and to lead our discussion, Obi Nwusu, the Co-Founder and CEO of Fedi. So uh, thank you very much for having me. And uh, I, uh, for the Madeirans here, I, I used to live here, and it's, it's a special place in my heart, so it's great being back. Um, now, many of you, you had a bit of a, a rundown, but many of you might not actually know what Beatrust is. So before we get into any more details, we should have a go at answering that question. So for the Beatrust board members here, um, what is B-Trust? How would you describe it for the audience? Um, can you guys hear me? Just shout. <laughs> um, right, thanks, Obi. So B-Trust is an organization, first of all, that exists because of a very generous donation from Jack here and um, Jay-Z back in 2021, beginning of 2022, thereabouts. And we have coined this thing to say we exist to locate, educate, and remunerate developers working on open source Bitcoin projects. And essentially, that's what we do. We support um, people in Africa and in other Global South locations to get involved with Bitcoin development, open source Bitcoin development, and we remunerate them to do that, and Femi was talking about that in the earlier panel, about some of that work around educating those developers that we then go on to support to work on open source projects. So that's the sort of short answer to, to describe what um, B-Trust is. Abaka, how would you? Yeah, and in general, like the way you should think of it is, B-Trust is existing at the center of, kind of the heart of the innovation that's happening on the continent in terms of Africa as a priority when it comes to developers coming out. There's still a lot to do with regards to the end-to-end -end pipeline that needs to be developed for developers going from, I don't know anything about Bitcoin, all the way up to I can build for Bitcoin and have a sustainable career in open source. So the majority of the work really is focused on ensuring the health and integrity of the open source ecosystem in the Bitcoin space specifically, because we are Bitcoin only, just to clarify. And at the end of the day, really, for, for us, the, the aim is to make sure that we have, one, a healthy pipeline going from zero to hero. Two, we want to make sure that we have a sustainable means for developers to actually work on what we believe is the most important project in human history, which is Bitcoin. And at the end of day three, we want to make sure that all that extant potential on the continent is really channeled into something that could help alleviate a lot of the problems that we have on the continent, whether it's from failing currencies, inflation, and things like that. So that's kind of where I'd say the framing should be in terms of how you think about B-Trust. Yeah, and um, the only thing, I mean, at the moment, our first uh, market that we focused on was, was Africa, but um, we're focused on what, for one of a better phrase, we call the Global South. So it's Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and more. But that, that brings me on to a question for, for all of you. Um, why is this needed? We've got chain code, we've got Brink, we've got open sets. Why do you actually need why do you do this? Actually, I'm going to start with the guy with the great cap in the middle. <laughs> um, well, just, I mean, just some context into to why, to why we did it in the first place. Um, Jay is a huge fan of Bitcoin. I'm a massive fan of Bitcoin. And we, we've, been, we've been doing a lot together and, and just interested in, in having a lot more impact um, together. And one of the things we did was 
um, was to give Bitcoin to his home, Marcy Projects, and to attempt to create a, a circular economy in Marcy Projects in, in Brooklyn, New York. And that's still going. We, we started with education and actually um, giving people Bitcoin um, and then learning from them. And eventually we'll go around and, and figure out how to sign up these merchants so that we can have a true circular economy um, in Marcy. And then the, um, with, with B-Trust, uh, the, the need we saw was that um, Bitcoin is absolutely amazing and it solves real problems. And the real present problems that it solves for and the populations that it solves for, there's not enough of those people working on Bitcoin and working on, on Bitcoin Core in particular. And we wanted to solve that problem. How do we get more developers into Bitcoin, um, into Bitcoin Core? How do we get them building companies around Bitcoin? How do we get them doing more open source? So we decided to do something super crazy and super big because Africa is crazy and big and South America is crazy and big and um, Central America is crazy and big. And we gave uh, 500 Bitcoin, which is, I think, worth a lot of money right now. And we'll only get worth, we'll only become more, worth more. And we, we gave it with no strings attached. We wanted to uh, hire a board that took the Bitcoin and did what they thought was best with no input from me and Jay and no control from, from me and Jay. So we uh, went through applications for about 8,000 people. And we found these amazing folks in Carla. Uh, who's not here? And it was a it was a very 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 long process, um, but just like Bitcoin, we were slow but we were deliberate, and I think we found an incredible um, group of people who can really do the right thing for Bitcoin and and with this massive amount of money that will only increase. The reason we wanted to give Bitcoin is because we knew that Bitcoin only goes up. And we knew that those resources will o only increase um, if we're using the, the currency that um, we're trying to help at the same time as well. And we've been nothing but impressed. We don't talk a lot by design. Um, but when we do, it's amazing. And we um, give Obi a hard time as well. Um, but it's, it's just been amazing what, what the board has done with it thus far. And um, Kwan Kala and the Beatrice Builders and really focusing on getting people into Bitcoin Core. And I think we've, you all have had some success, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, spoil it, but uh, you've had some early success and, and it can only, only be more. So I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more proud. And I think this model uh, is phenomenal. And I hope that other people do it as well, um, especially uh, people at this conference. Even a little bit helps, um, but we need, we need more people who will benefit massively from Bitcoin, working on Bitcoin and building it for themselves, and not just to be in the single point of failure of Western countries, such as the US or, or Europe, where, the, where a, a lot of the Bitcoin developers were, especially the Bitcoin core developers. Yeah, just, just to echo that, um, I'm Nigerian. I live in Nigeria. The, oh, thank you. <laughs> there, there are many indignities that one has to learn to live with when you're a Nigerian living in Nigeria. Um, one, of, one of that is related to things as simple as travel, you know, visas and all of the things you have to go through, how much you have to pay, all of the questions you have to answer about you know, yes, I am coming back home to my two children. I'm not going to vanish in <laughs> this country of yours. But it's, it's the same thing with participating in the financial, in the global financial system. One of the phrases that you encounter the most living in Nigeria is, this service is not available in your region. <laughs> and, and so for me, getting into Bitcoin and finding this thing that helped remove some of that indignity of just not being able to participate in this global financial system 
to me was a no-brainer. But the more I learned about Bitcoin, the more concerned, in a sense, I got that this was something else that was being built for us. That's another indignity that you have to live with when you're a Nigerian, is everybody wants to help you. And it's, <laughs> on the face of it, it's good, you know, but it's just like, how can we contribute to building this thing that's solving our problems? How can we be active participants in these things that's going to open up this whole world to us? So for me, when I saw Jack's tweet in 2021 saying, we're doing this thing to support developers in Africa and the global south and India, I think the tweet said, I was like, hell yeah, because if Bitcoin is going to be the thing that allows us engage with these global financial systems, we can't be just consumers of the solution. We have to be contributing to building the solution. So for me, that was, the, that was really the interest. In my day job, I support entrepreneurs um, initially working in the creative industries, but now working across the whole of the digital economy. And one of the biggest challenges is just around payments, cross-border remittances. And so it was seeing that from that point of Bitcoin solves this. So for me, I think Femi was saying in the earlier panel about when we, when we talk about Bitcoin, it's not so much preaching the gospel of what Bitcoin is, it's preaching the gospel of what it can do and just letting people see the utility of it in a very real sense, not in the future, today, things that it allows them to do today. So that's a sort of long-winded way of saying, for me, getting involved with Trust was around seeing an opportunity for Africans, people in other locations, Latin America, Central America, um, India, to work on this thing that will make their lives better and not just be recipients of the benefits of it. Thank you. And in general, like, again, back to the, the, the question you asked, Obi, thinking of exactly why you need a B trust to begin with, it's a fair, it's a fair question, because at the end of the day, there are existing open source uh, grant providers, like you said, but the problem is, given how nascent the space is in Africa and how much you have to navigate on the ground, it requires its own set of infrastructure that needs to be the base layer on top of which other things can kind of like le leach onto to develop and grow into things that would be sustainable down the line. And in general, th the whole thing is, with regards to Africa, like to Audrema's point and really Jack's point at the end of the day is, we want to make sure that, again, we already know what the stats are with regards to demographics of being the youngest continent, so that means either one of two things, either we're a ton of rowdy folks in one cramped up place or we're a ton of productive folks. So I think for us, really, it's a case of, okay, with all this productive capacity or productive potential, how are you able to tie that into something like Bitcoin when it comes to developing the future of finance? And like Audrema said, again, one of the common things for us as Nigerians, whether in the country or like uh, in the diaspora is, you know, the sharing that feeling of being locked out of mainstream finance for a variety of reasons that honestly just come down to stringent KYC rules that are mostly arbitrary to a certain extent. But at the end of the day, it's a case where we're saying, okay, we're locked out of that financial system, but here's a new financial system where you have the opportunity to actually have a stake in that. And not only have a stake in that, but given the amount of developer talent on the continent, you actually are able to drive the development globally and be a continent where everyone else is able to look to you guys to figure out exactly what it means to build for Bitcoin, whether it's companies or in this case, really with Bitrust, with Bitrust there's a case of saying, what does it mean to be a Bitcoin developer? What are the main pain points that we're trying to solve for? Because at the end of the day, if you really want to help long-term with Bitcoin, you have to replicate exactly what the main pain points is trying to solve, and that is uniquely seen in the African continent. So I feel the majority of the development that will come out of Africa as a result of some of the work we'll be doing with Btrust, and really the main purpose is to get those developers building based on the pain points that they feel, which reflect the core solutions that Bitcoin professes at the end of the day. So it's a case where we're saying, okay, these guys are able to channel all of their frustrations into something that they can have a seat at the table for the first time in terms of finance. So there's no longer a case where we're sitting back letting the IMF dictate exactly where money flows are, and even more broadly when it comes to things like mining. But in general, at the end of the day, it all starts with the developer base. So I'd say that's one of the main reasons why you need a huge infrastructure like Btrust to set at that able, where it's able to get in developers, be this anchor of 
moving forward, kind of monitoring how things should be in a, in a more progressive and like productive way. One thing I want to um, say is that there's actually one other member of B Trust who couldn't be here today, um, Carla. So, so she's another amazing member of the team. Um, for my part, um, so we've got one person on the stage who was born in the West and grew up in the West. Um, we've got two who were born in Africa and grew up in Africa. Um, I was um, conceived in um, Nigeria, but just about made it to and was born in the UK. So, you know, I'm, I'm sort of in, I tried to claim I'm in two sides, the two camps here. But it was very interesting because when I was growing up, um, this is, this is a, for historical reasons, my grandfather, in, in his time, um, polygamy was still legal in, in, uh, in um, Nigeria. And he had many, many, many wives. And therefore, I have hundreds of cousins. And um, it's, I, and we're direct, but we're direct relatives. And we have, I have many cousins who um, are in, in Africa, in Nigeria. I have a few in the US. I have a few in, in, in Europe and UK. Um, and basically, through just a lot of luck and a lot of hard work, a few of my um, um, uncles and aunts made it to, to Europe. And, that's, and I was fortunate enough to grow up here. When I would be traveling back to, to Africa, to Nigeria, I would see a stark difference. My direct cousins are about a foot, which is, I don't know, 30 centimeters shorter than me on average. Direct cousins. If I go to the US, they're about two inches taller than me on average. <laughs> so there's a direct correlation between wealth and, and just because of, because there's no other reason, it's not genetic, just because of where we were born, you can see that. But it, it, it went through everything else in your life. Now. That is unfair, but um, that wasn't the real issue for me. The real issue was the realization that right now on this planet, there are dozens of Einsteins, dozens of Nikola Teslas, dozens of Jacks, you know, there's dozens of them. But if, they, if the seed falls in the wrong place and they're in the wrong country and the wrong family, they miss out on achieving their absolute peak potential which means the world misses out on them, on them achieving their peak potential. Because just one of those people can change the world. And so we all miss out if we do not locate these people. I.e., we want to move towards a meritocracy. Now, I'm also a geek, and sometime later I came across Bitcoin, and lots of people told me about it because it's geekery combined with meritocracy, and it was like right up my street. And that's where I fell down the rabbit hole. But fast forward, I see this tweet from Jack. And I'm in the middle of selling my last company. And I thought, this is it. This is the opportunity. Not only is it clear, and it's been clear to me for a while, that Bitcoin um, can help. And the global, for want of a better phrase, the global South, Africa, um, Asia, Southeast, um, Southeast Asia, um, Middle East, um, and LATAM, for example. But it's also the other way around as well, that Bitcoin can benefit from the productive efforts and brain power and energy and vibrancy of the global self by finding these, these sort of needles in the haystack. And with the resources that were being generously donated to us, it, I had to try. And I'm sure there were incredible odds, but I had to try and do my very best to support this so that we can find those exceptional people and the world can benefit from that. But now we get to the hard bit, guys. So, oh, no, no, it's actually not. Just what have we... What's happened so far? What's been since, since the formation of B Trust? And I, I remember the original meeting, we had this sort of hangouts or Zoom call, and you were saying this is blind, irrevocable trust. We're just giving you this 500 
And if you wanted, you can go off and buy a, you know, a, a, a castle in, in Germany with the money. We, we haven't done that. And I don't think we would have been selected if we were the sort of people to do that. But um, what's happened since then? I mean, in general, a, a ton has happened to, like Jack alluded to earlier. And kind of the key highlights, it would be good to give you like a timeline. So since the call, which was obviously very interesting, given the fact that I'm obviously a huge, I've, I've been following Jack and obviously Jay-Z, like, come on, being a fan of rap, it was incredible to see them on stage. But at the end of the day, from that point till now, a ton has happened. So primarily, we've been looking at what it means to be B-Trust. So as the inaugural board, one of the main priorities really for us is to make sure that one, it's kind of a rotating board at the end of the day. So it's not a case where we're gonna stay here in perpetuity and kind of block off other folks who might have fresh and new novel ideas to kind of take this project to where it needs to be and become sustainable. So a lot of that was really ironing out our principles, which just to go briefly really is, again, like I said, Bitcoin only, uh, free and open source technology focused. We're looking at transparency, integrity, and at the end of the day, really, it's, it's making sure that the board is well-defined enough for it to be able to accommodate any future board members at the end of the day so that they have a clear path in terms of what the core fundamentals are. So it's not a case where we started out, we do some great job, and then the subsequent boards end up you know, tanking the whole project and it becomes a whole mess and waste of time. So that was the first part of B-Trust, really, setting that up. And a lot of that had to do with setting up an actual entity, getting banking done. And, the immediate thing really is, it's, it's obviously something that we should have had in mind is, again, you're dealing with Bitcoin, so it's not a case where it's something that's widely accepted or even seen as something that isn't like dark money, for example. So a ton of that has been navigating both jurisdictional hurdles, really, as well as banking hurdles. But without all those issues, really, we're able to navigate that and, and, and start deploying some of the capital. So that has been in, in the form of supporting the first Africa Bitcoin conference, which started back in 2022, I believe, by Farida and an incredible team. And we saw with that, really, we continue to support that because we feel it's necessary in the sense that it provided a home for people who are looking to get into the Bitcoin space without necessarily being conned into crypto, because a lot of that is popular on the continent. And other than that, we've also looked at sponsoring other dev focused conferences, things like uh, Dakar Days. And in general, really, since then, we've also extended that really support to projects like Bitshala, as well as uh, Liberated Satoshi, because again, we are set up again to work on the Global South, but now the main focus is Africa, given the makeup of the board. So it's not a case where we're trying to do too many things at the same time, but we are dipping our toes into that. So that has been really on those sides in terms of the funding. Another thing that was useful is, again, we're open source focused, so that means really we're looking at getting as many talented devs as sustainably and as, as carefully as possible to the open source space, specifically Bitcoin Core, and that takes a lot of, <laughs> a lot of work because one, there are capacity limits to projects. So some projects like Bitcoin Core have a ton of people who are one-time contributors, but then what ends up happening is they, they provide a ton of code that's not necessarily well-maintained or really they don't really care, and everyone is kind of stuck with sorting that out. And with other products, they are able to have mentorship provided. So that's another thing we have prioritized over time after learning from, you know, the work from Gala and then folding that into Btrust is you need to pair developers that are new into the space with mentors that have that time and capacity to let them have the ability to walk through the space in a way where they're able to efficiently allocate their time and show, you know, actual growth. So part of that process has been the open source cohort, which we have, where we're funding one developer called Vlad, who has been working on the Bitcoin development kit, which the plan with that is really to make it as ubiquitous and as easy as possible to develop Bitcoin wallets all across. And other than that, recently, after the acquisition of Gala, which happened a few uh, last year, the whole point with that really is Gala kind of flipped its purpose into open source, which strongly aligns with the, the aim of Btrust at the end of the day. So for us, it was a case where there is this really fledging pipeline that's already being created by Gala and is a case where we all we only need to just adopt it and further provide uh, enough funding really and sustainability for that product to get to a point where we're like, okay, we have this pipeline internally as well as the work we're doing externally to fund these projects. So since then, again, like I said, setting up the board itself, banking, getting some of that work into conferences that we feel are necessary, getting into the open source cohort, which will be onboarding a lot more developers moving forward. 
all the way up to the work through Gala, where we now have developers we're also giving grants to to kind of test them that do work on Bitcoin courses. So since then, the idea has been, for a lot of us on the content that were the few devs that exist, was to get at least even if it's one developer working on Bitcoin Core. And so far, I've been able to do a lot more than that, where we have Abubakar, who is actually a namesake of mine, who works on Bitcoin Core, working on Mempool and things like that. So for us, it's a net win that has happened given all the hurdles we've had to go, go through. And it's a case where the future is bright. There are a ton of talented developers already working on Bitcoin Core, and all of that is the result of the hard work of people on the ground and Btrust. So expect a lot more of that moving forward and a lot more structure, really, and obviously communication as we narrowed in, you know, getting the CEO to kind of move this moving forward. So that's really it at the end of the day. So a ton of work to do, but I'm glad we're able to achieve all of this given all the circumstances. So I, I just wanted to build on that a, a little bit. One of the things that I'm, I'm we've, we've done everything that Abu said, of course, <laughs> but one of the things I'm most proud of really is our support for the Africa Bitcoin Conference. Um, and, and, and that's just because of the, the joy and the gift, I think that Africa Bitcoin Conference is. Again, I've seen too many things that are meant to be global movements, except it doesn't happen in Africa. <laughs> and so for me, African Bitcoin Conference is this thing that's supporting and nurturing an African ecosystem of people working in Bitcoin, whether they're entrepreneurs building businesses or they're engineers working on open source or they're educators uh, supporting people to get into Bitcoin. I feel like, um, just being able to support that to be born and to exist, um, uh, where, where um, Bitros is the biggest supporter of the Africa Bitcoin Conference, both in 2022 and 2023. And I'm really proud of that because you can't, it, open source developers are a, a micro subset of that ecosystem. And you can't find them unless the ecosystem is thriving or less the ecosystem is not fragmented. So I just wanted to build on that point about supporting Africa Bitcoin Conference. I think it's beyond a conference, it's supporting this ecosystem to be born and this ecosystem to exist, both in the, in the construct of the conference, but also the collaborations that come out of that. The people that go to that and see new possibilities suddenly, and they can imagine a future where they can live in a world where you know, this service is actually available in your country because you're plugged into this global system that you can contribute to and, and benefit from. And I definitely recommend, this is an incredible conference, but if you get a chance, go to Africa, check out the Africa Bitcoin Conference. So from, you'll be forgiven for thinking, obviously it's been plain sailing, no issues, no challenges. But obviously, that's not the case. Um, what were some of the, I know some of them, but what were some of the challenges um, that we, we faced and, over the, and anybody else who's considering doing something similar to this could potentially learn from for our side? So I, I think the biggest challenge for me can be summed up in trying to build a, a Bitcoin organization in a fiat world. It just feels like everything conspires against you. Um, so even something as simple as, right, where these four individuals that have been brought together to do this thing called B-Trust, and we have to create an entity, right, that's legal. And then you're suddenly confronted with, ah, okay, so w where do we do it? Like, where do we register it practically? And I remember we have this massive spreadsheet that we created in the first month, really enthusiastically, you know, it has to be Bitcoin friendly. It has to be somewhere with some regulatory stability. It has to have like strong human rights records and strong property rights records. And as you start to build the criteria, lots of countries started to drop off the list. Um, so that was the first hurdle was just figuring out what jurisdiction can we register this entity? And then beyond that is even the simple thing that the four board members live on three different continents. Just practically speaking, even for jurisdictions that had those things, 
in some countries, you can't register unless half of the board live in the country. So it was just navigating that took several months. And also, a real problem, if you try to avoid having uh, Nigerian people on your board, it gives you so oh, much God. Tell hassles. me about it. <laughs> you, you Nigerians, you know, we could have so had this serious. set up in like... <laughs> Absolutely. So that, that was one massive issue, was just registering it. And then you, you do that. Uh, and, and then it's the dependencies as well. So you can't hire a team or a CEO or anybody because what are you contracting them to? They don't work for Obi or for me or for Abu or for Kala. They work for Beatrice. But what is Beatrice? It doesn't exist. So that was a dependency to then be able to hire a team. And so... We couldn't do that until it was registered. Abu mentioned banking. It felt like we tried to get a bank account in the worst possible time um, because this was the beginning of 2023 or something. Again, that was hurdles and hurdles and hurdles and hurdles. And it seems really simple, um, but when you're trying to do this across diff different continents with Bitcoin in your name, and with these Nigerians on your board, <laughs> it's much more complicated than it sounds. So I would say that that has been the biggest challenge, was just the, the friction in navigating this fiat world with a, a, a set of rules that just don't enable the kind of work um, we're, we're doing. I think there was also in terms of just figuring out a, a rhythm to working together as a board. Because again, we're really diverse, come from very different backgrounds, have different perspectives. Literally, the only thing we probably have in common is that we all love Bitcoin. Apart from that, it's like we have, all have very different views of, of you know, what the organization should do on a day-to-day. -day. So I think that has also taken a, a bit of work to find that rhythm of working across very different backgrounds and, and different ideas of how this organization should work. Yeah, I would also, the other thing, because different people had just, just different specializations. So, because I ran an exchange for a while, um, I had a lot of experience with banks. I've probably opened and had seen force closed um, hundreds of banks over the years, bank accounts over the years. So I um, took on the task, and it's an ongoing task. If you've got a Bitcoin business with large amounts, you. You have to always be opening bank accounts. But one thing that was really interesting was um, when we can find partners or suppliers where you pay with Bitcoin, it's so obvious why this is going to just destroy the existing system. One thing can take literally years of effort, and the other one is literally seconds to minutes. And it's, uh, but you have to find. Um, and this is where people need to go out there and orange pill a business and um, businesses or service providers to businesses. It's one thing with the Africa Bitcoin Conference, for example, or, or the um, people that we're working with to provide funds. Of course, they set Bitcoin. But simple things, it's very hard to find quality um, recruitment consultants or um, company formation um, organizations or accountants who accept Bitcoin, um, in, especially with understandings of law on an international basis. The more of those, the easier it becomes to just sidestep this incredibly inefficient system and just pay them in Bitcoin. And that would have been, we could have done this all, you know, in a matter of moments and, and it would have been a complete um, side point if we could find a few key suppliers. So if people have an idea of being able to find people who are able to supply the services that are needed to form a company and run a company, and, and that, are, you have, that are, supports multiple countries and can accept Bitcoin, that's in, it seems like a simple thing, but it's incredibly valuable. No, a ton, and just a quick, a quick one as well, which has been kind of an ongoing problem, but at the end of the day, that's the whole point of having B-Trust to begin with, is having been involved with Gala before B-Trust, the immediate pain point we saw were kind of three, three way, basically. So one is finding developers that are really good is very, very hard, especially when there's no mechanism to kind of sieve through that. Two, it's very, very difficult for developers to 
kind of measure the growth between understanding exactly what the hell Bitcoin is all the way up to becoming developers that can be very, very, very meaningful in terms of the contributions they give out. And three, maintaining this map really of exactly where some of these developers can be coming from and how you can actually onboard them into this, this pipeline. So having started with you know, Gala and got the call from Bernard and got to actually meet Carla, which eventually also came on to Beatrice, was very interesting. That was one of the main painstaking points that we had to kind of solve for. And it was awesome to see that that eventually folded into Beatrust because that helped solve the problem too with Beatrust when it in, in terms of like highlighting the developer landscape, ensuring that we actually have this fledging pipeline. But one key thing I think that's very useful that I'm happy now we have in Beatrust and moving forward will be very, very useful is for you to actually appeal to developers, they have to feel comfortable enough for you to for them to actually come in and kind of discuss and map out through themselves, because a lot of them are kind of like shy, just sh super shadowy code coders in their rooms. So having, having some of these meetups in key cities in Africa has been very, very helpful in really highlighting some of that, some of that talent that otherwise would have been overlooked or most likely not even discovered in the, in the first place. So in terms of moving forward, that has been something that has been, it was initially difficult, but now that we have these, these bid devs, which is the Bitcoin developer meetings that we have across these cities in Africa, it has started a kind of like a flywheel where people are able to not only start up developer groups and kind of meetups, but to take it as their own. So it's not a case where we're kind of dictating what should be done. It's more a case where they, they have a touch point in each strategic city in like Nairobi, Lagos, Abuja for them to touch base and also learn how to run some of these local ground ground movements really for Bitcoin developers. So I think that was one of the main key points and kind of how we managed to navigate that that I think will be very, very exciting moving forward. So yeah, if you're in Africa, hit up one of the local bit devs that have been as a result of Btrust and try and see how you're able to provide value or really just help out with this space. So um, that's now. Final question. It's for everybody, but I'll start with you, Jack. We've done a lot so far, but what is your, in your case, what is your vision for where you think or where you would like to see? We're sort of, we're just opening the book on our board meetings and so on, so they, everybody can hear. Where you'd like to see Beatrust over the next one, five years or more? Um, where, where I'd like to see Beatrust over the next? Be trust and, and what we, in terms of what you think we can achieve and what you would like to see happen on the continent or in the global south? Yeah, I mean, the, <clears throat> one of the reasons I think this is important is that the, the global population predominantly is going to come from the global south over the, over the next few generations. Um, Nigeria in, in particular uh, will be the most populated continent in the next two decades. Um, and we need as many people as possible to benefit from what, what Bitcoin provides, and, and that's them owning the money and owning the system and, and being able to actually develop it at the same time. I, <clears throat> I mean, just, just uh, I'm, I'm a product of open source. I'm a product of um, my parents bringing home a computer and letting me run wild on it. And um, the, the more of that we have globally to every single kid around the world, no matter where they come from, uh, as you said, can, can just like an idea can really change the course of our history for the better. And we just don't know where it's going to come from. But why not increase the probability that it comes from as many places as possible? Um, and for, for Bitcoin Core, the, the people that maintain Bitcoin, the people that um, look out for it, the people that protect it, that that uh, population be more represented by the world, uh, I think is really critical um, because it just, otherwise it creates a single point of failure. And it creates a single point of failure in a particular civilization or a particular society that might be troubled um, in the moment and might be going through some things which are distracting or easy to uh, attack in certain ways. And why not have um, 
as many different answers spread ge geographically and culturally and um, from a psychological standpoint as well. Because what we're really here for is to make sure that Bitcoin serves everyone. And that means everyone, right? So um, I, I, don't, I don't know what you all are going to do next, but I'm really excited for it and I can't wait to see it. And I hope that, as I said before, I hope that others follow it. I, I want this to be a model that other people take on. And it doesn't just have to be about Bitcoin. I'm really worried about artificial intelligence and the fact that it's going to be locked up into effectively five companies and one massive government in China. And it's completely closed source. And you have five CEOs and uh, you know a dictator basically um, writing the answers for the questions that you and your kids and your kids' kids are going to ask. That feels scary. Um, so why not? make sure that we build open alternatives and why not fund them and why not make sure that we're covering the whole the whole planet and taking as much input as possible um, so that um, yeah that's what I hope for um, what I'd like to see is just more scale in, in the work that we do, we, we support Africa Bitcoin Conference, we support a handful of developers to work on open source, we're supporting Btrust builders to, to support cohorts of people learning to um, work on open source um, code. But it's a drop in the ocean when you think about the possibility. And so in the next sort of months, years, it's just seeing us scale that up massively where we're, we are making a difference, I think. Um, it has been slow, although after today, I'm going to be saying it has been <coughs> deliberate and thoughtful rather than slow. <laughs> um, it has been slow, so I would like to see us just pick up the pace a little bit and achieve a bit more scale in the devs that we're able to support, in the ecosystems that we're able to support. I'd like to see a Malawi Bitcoin conference, I'd like to see a Nigeria Bitcoin conference that we're supporting <coughs> so that we're building grassroots ecosystems as well as continental ecosystems. Um, I'd also like uh, to see us support uh, developers outside of Africa, even though we've started to support people like Bichala and others. Uh, um, you know, the, the global south, the global majority is not just in Africa. There's opportunities to support work in Latin America, Central America, as we've talked about. So I'd very much like to see us um, do, do that work. And I, just in the immediate, I'd like to see us recruit a team of people that live and breathe and just work on Beatrice every day. So in the short term, my dream and, and what I, I am living for at the moment is to recruit a CEO and a team that will help us just accelerate that pace that we've started on. I mean, honestly, I'm, first of all, super proud of all the work that has been done so far and super humbled to get to work with incredible folks on the board, really. And at the end of the day, I think Btrust has the potential to be very consequential in terms of the trajectory of Bitcoin development on the continent for a variety of reasons. And I feel it's so nascent, like we're so early, it's hard to tell, obviously, when you're in the space and like in the meat grinder, but I think there's a ton that's gonna come in terms of noise, deferring interests, governments when it comes to mining and things like that. And obviously that brings with it like geopolitical implications or heck, even just political implications at a local level. So I feel for B-Trust really, one, we'll need to ensure that we have all that infrastructure to handle all these adversities really that we'll be most likely facing moving forward. But more so ensuring that we're able to empower this developer base at the end of the day to become just as resilient as Bitcoin is. And not only that, but to ensure that we carry on that resilience in terms of how they're thinking about building for Bitcoin. And really, it's a case where we want to sink into the background to a point where we're more on the roots of kind of the, the whole ecosystem as a whole. So it's not a case where in 10 years or maybe in 50 years, the majority of the work is just coming from Btrust alone. It should be a case where if Btrust really works, in the next 10 to 50 years, it will be a case of, oh, you know, we were just the roots that grew this magnificent tree 
that blossomed into a ton of developers, a ton of creativity on the space, and is directly responsible to why we still have Bitcoin at that point in time. I mean, I echo everything that we've just heard now. I, I, in summary, I would say that um, the end result for me would like, I would like to go back to that vision I had when I was young, that we find these needles in the haystack, wherever they are. Obviously, it could be in the UK, they could be in Europe, they could be in the US, but they could, the next needle in the haystack could be in Guatemala, it could be, they could be in Mexico, they could be in Indonesia, they could be in, in Malawi. But we will find them, and when we find them, all of us will benefit. Thank you. Can I, can I just say one more thing? Uh, okay. I just, I, just speaking to the, the values of Bitcoiners, like, um, it's pretty crazy because these people on stage and Carla didn't really know each other and didn't really work, work, like work together, and they maybe knew of each other. But it's like watching a reality TV show. Like, we're bringing together four people, and we're giving them 500 Bitcoin. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And they're doing the right thing. I mean, they're doing the right thing, and they're going to help millions and millions, if not billions of people. So congrats to you all, and like, thank you so much.